Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Stacy. Today, we are going to look at number one hundred forty-six problem. L R U cash. Before we jump into the problem, let's look at some pre info that would help us to understand it better. First, what is a cache? Cache is a component that stores data so that future requests for that data could be served faster. If you look at this graph, cache is closer to CPU comparing to main memory. That's why the time to read from cache is much faster. Also, it has smaller space, so the limited space could be easily filled up. Then, when the new data comes in, we have to get rid of something first. But which one should we remove? There are some algorithms to solve this kind of problem. We also call them as cache replacement algorithm, and LRU is one of them. Since reading from cache is much faster, we'd like to keep those atoms that we may use over and over again. In other words, we'd like to get rid of the atoms that we may not use for the longest period of time. So how do we find them? Here comes the LRU, which is least recently used. It's basically a prediction based on the fact if the last time we access it is a long time ago, then the next time we access it would not be any time soon. Thus, we invoked it. Let's use this example to see how LRU works. Supposing we have a cache of cells four, and then we put one, two, three, four in turns into the cache, so the cache is full. Then five comes. We have to get rid of the least recently used one, which is one since we put one into cache first. After we removing one, we put five into the cache, and two becomes the least recently used one now. If we access two at this moment, that means we used two recently. Then two is no longer the least recently used atom. Instead, three becomes the least recently used one now. And finally, when six comes, we remove the LRU atom, which is three, so that we can put six in, and four becomes the LRU atom now. Now that we understand how LRU works, let's look at the problem now. In this problem, we are going to implement LRU cache class. When we initialize it, we define the capacity. And the int function returns the value of the key if the key exists. Otherwise, return negative one. For the put function, we update the value of the key if the key exists. Otherwise, add the key value pair to the cache. If the numbers of keys exceeds the capacity from this operation, we invoke the least recently used one. There is also a requirement for the time complexity, which is O1 for get and put function. All right, the problem is now cleared. Let's think about the algorithm next. Okay, the first question we need to handle is how to mark the LRU atom. Some people may think to use a timestamp because the LRU atom is the atom we accessed the earliest. But is there a better way to do this? Let's review what we did in the previous example. In this example, the red atom is the LRU atom, and it seems like it always shows at the end of the cache. On the contrary, whenever a new atom comes in, we put it at the beginning of the cache. For example, when five comes in. Another thing to note is that whenever we access an atom from the cache, we also put it at the beginning of the cache. For example, we will access two here. So it seems like the position of the atom kind of represents the timestamp we access the atom, and it actually does. If we think about the cache as a list, from the head to the tail is from the most recent ones to the least recent ones. If we represent the cache as a linked list, there are three different situations. First, when there is a new atom comes in. For example, the five, we are gonna create a node and add it to the head. And second, when we access an atom in the cache, we remove it from the current position and also add it to the head, since that's the one we used most recently. Last but not least, when we reach the capacity, we remove from the tail, which is the LRU atom. 
The second question is, how can we make sure the get function is O1 time complexity? Because the get function is the key to get a value, and also it's O1, it's very easy for us to think use a hash map here. The key of the hash map is the key we put in, and the value of the hash map is the node of the linked list, which includes the key, the value, the next pointer. Another question similar to the above one is how can we make sure the put function is also O1 time complexity? As we all know, for linked list, the add operation is O1, but the remove operation is ON, because we have to traverse the list to the node we are going to remove. So how can we make the remove option is also O1? The answer is to use a double linked list. Let's look at this example. Supposing we're going to remove two here. Here is what's going to happen. We make three point to one instead of two. At the same time, make one point to three instead of two. At this point, the next node of three is one, and the previous node of one is three, which means we removed two from the list. So for the double linked list, the remove operation is also O1. And since we use the double linked list, we also need a pre pointer here. So, in conclusion, use a hash map makes the get function is O1, and use a double linked list makes the put function is also O1. Then comes to the question 4 any other details? We all know in a linked list for the boundary nodes, we have to do not check when adding or removing, it just makes things complicated. So is there something we can do so that we can forget about all the null checks? Luckily, there is. We can use a dummy head and tail. After adding the dummy head and tail, we basically say goodbyes to boundary node situations. And of course, at the beginning, there is only a dummy head and tail connecting to each other. As we solved all four questions, let's jump to the solution. Let's look at the node class first. There is key and value. Pre point to the pre node, next point to the next node. When we initialize the node, we pass in the key and the value. Then comes to the dummy head and tail. Next is the add function of the double links list. We use this function to add the node to the head of the list, which is the next node of the dummy head. Let's see how it works. Supposing we are adding a node to our initial state. First, node pre is head. Then, node next is head next. Then, head next pre is node. Finally, head next is node. After these four steps, node is the next node of the dummy head, which means it is the head of our list. Then come to the remove function. It removes the node from the current position. Let's look at this example again. So node.pre.next is node.next means 3.1 instead of 2. And node.next.pre is node.pre means 1 points to 3 instead of 2. Till now, we have 3 and 1 connecting to each other, which means we removed 2 from the list. The last function of the list is the update function. It basically just call remove function and then call add function. Why do we need this? Remember we said early, if we access an atom in the cache, we need first remove it from the current position and then add it to the head. Let's basically combine these two functions together. So here it is the update function. Finally, come to the LRU cache. We have count and capacity to keep track the size of the cache and the map to store key and node pair so that the get function is O1 time complexity. When we initialize the LRU cache, we define the capacity, initialize count at zero, initialize the map, and create dummy head and tail node, then connect them together. The get function, we use the key to get the node from the map. If the node is null, it means the key is not in the cache, we return negative one. Otherwise, we update the node. Remember, first remove, then add it to the head. In the end, we return the value of the node. And finally, the put function. Same as get, we use the key to get the node from the map. 
if it's now, the key is now in the cache. So we create a node, use the key and the value, then call add function, add it to the head. Don't forget, also put the key and node into the map and increase the count as we have a new atom. If the node not equals to null means it already in the cache, so we just update. First, update the value. Also call update function here, remember? Remove it from the current position first and then add it to the head. It's because when we get the atom, we use the atom. So we have to update and move it to the head. Finally, if we exceed the capacity, we need to remove the LRU atom, which is the tail. We can get it by dummy tail.pre. We call remove function to remove it from the tail. Don't forget also remove it from the map and decrease the count. One thing to note here is whenever we create a node and add it to the list, we also add it to the map and increase the count. Whenever we remove a node from the list, we also remove it from the map and decrease the count. Next, let's verify the solution on lead code. First, the node class, then the dummy head and tail then the add function, the remove function, the update function, the LRU cache where we initialize everything, then the get function, finally the put function. We run the code, it's accepted. Then we submit the code, it's also accepted. Finally, let's review the key points again. First, we use the relative position of the node in the linked list to mark the LRU atom. From the left to right is from the most recently to the least recently used ones. Then we use a hash map to make sure the get function is O1, and use a double linked list to make the put function is also O1. Finally, to avoid boundary node situation, we use a dummy head and dummy tail. All right, guys, here's all I have for you today. If you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe the channel. I'm Stacy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.